So we like to do a lot of water-cooled builds on the channel, and one of my favorite cases is the Case Labs SMA8. Now, this is going to be a pretty rare case, but it's awesome at demonstrating different possibilities for water cooling. Today, I'm going to show you some things not to do. In preparation for the NVIDIA 3000 series, I'm going to be taking apart this build anyway, so I decided, why don't I make a really terrible water cooling setup with a bunch of things you really shouldn't do? So let's talk about a bunch of these, and that way you guys can have a pretty good idea of what not to do. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Please subscribe, it helps grow the channel. Remember to leave a comment below. Also, thumbs up. Remember to hit that bell notification symbol. So let's get right into it. Water cooling your PC is really awesome, but I noticed that sometimes, especially people that are newer at it, they have a little bit of trouble and they end up making some mistakes, both in terms of the performance as well as the aesthetics. I decided that maybe the best way to talk about this is to do one of these builds with things you really shouldn't do. I tried to make it sort of as loopy and crazy as possible, something I wouldn't normally do. Of course, it doesn't look too great. It looks kind of nifty and cool if you're into that really sort of maybe avant-garde type of look but it's something you shouldn't do when you're water cooling your PC. So let's talk about a couple of these items and let's break it down. The first one is gonna concern some of the tubing aesthetics. You see that this loop actually has a dual loop, a separate loop for the GPU and a separate loop for the CPU in both different colors, in this case, in blue and green. Now that's absolutely fine. You can do a dual loop CPUs, you can do it one, um, you can make it look great, perform great. Now the issue here is gonna be combining soft tubing with hard tubing and at the same time at different types of fittings. You want to keep as much consistency as possible in your build. If you're going to be doing all soft tubing, which can also look great by the way, nothing against soft tubing, I do a lot of builds with that as well. Make sure to just have soft tubing. Some people start with maybe hard tubes and when it gets to a little bit harder areas, they don't want to bend their tubes or use more fittings, so they end up kind of putting soft tubing in there. In the past, this was really common for areas where you wouldn't see where the tubing is going to go. For example, in a big build that has like in a basement area with a radiator people would do hard tubing on the front and then soft tubing on the bottom i was always sort of a proponent of doing hard tubing all the way around even if it's actually harder on the bottom because you're not just going after the performance here you're also going after sort of the the craftsmanship and the build quality especially when you're doing a water cooled build you want to put in sort of a build that's going to be to the best of your abilities and trying to get the easy way out and use soft tubing together with hard tubing definitely is something you should avoid. And at the same token, don't mix fittings. If you're going to use a certain type of fittings from like a certain brand like EK Water Blocks or Bits Power, try to keep it to just that one single fitting. I know sometimes people like to mix it up depending on what they have, but I think it's worth it, especially if it's a build you're going to keep around for a while. It's worth it to keep it nice and uniform. That goes for the tubing type as well as the fittings. Another thing that that you should definitely not do. Look at the GPUs that I have on the system. The top one is a 2080 EK MSI GPU, and the bottom one is also a 2080, but it's using a regular size EK water blocks. It was just a reference PCB I threw a water block on. Don't mix and match two different GPUs in the same water cooled system. Now, this is a little bit less common nowadays because people generally aren't really SLI'ing or NV linked their setups. A lot of people are just going with one GPU, but if you happen to have two GPUs, even if they're both 2080s it really looks kind of terrible and it's very hard to do a nice loop when you have two different size gpus like this if they were the same sort of a block that'd be a whole different ball game but here you can see that the top msi ek water block it's just a much bigger card so the ports actually come out towards the the window much much more than the bottom gpu meaning you can't neatly connect them um, before in this build i had two msi 2080 gpus neatly connected you can make a nice straight run down but in this case, you have to do these kind of crazy loops and kind of zigzag around. And that's something else you definitely shouldn't do. Look at the loops that I did here, going from the top GPU to the bottom. Primarily, I wanted to show you what type of things not to do. I know sometimes you want to get a little bit crazy, have a really interesting loop design. But most of the time, it's actually going to look just a little bit terrible. Um, what I would do in this case is not have that GPU on the bottom. That's a different water block. Um, unfortunately, I think aesthetically, that's going to be the best thing that you can do. And then regardless, if you're doing soft tubing or hard tubing, then you can more easily access it. And if you have two equal size GPU blocks, you can make those nice two little runs in the middle and then just connect the block on the bottom. You're going to have a much easier time.
time. And also when you do your loop like this, these crazy kind of bends, if you're not careful, especially with soft tubing, you can kink the tube a little bit and that's going to affect your water flow, which in turn will negatively affect your water temperatures. So be very careful anytime you're making turns with soft tubing, don't make it too drastic. Definitely don't make it like this or else you have a great probability of maybe kinking your tube and that way you're going to get considerably less performance. In general, even if you're using soft tubing, you want to make your runs sort of more gradual. You want to make them as simple as possible from component to component. So the least amount of tubing that you can use and just try to make it aesthetically pleasing, maybe a slight bend or something like that, but definitely nothing too crazy like this, unless you really know what you're doing and you're going to be doing like some type of crazy design. I would definitely avoid that. And the same goes even for hard tubing. I know sometimes you may want to try some crazy type of loops, but unless you're going to make it really nice and parallel, everything really even, and you're going to put in hours and hours of work, I would just go for sort of the most straightforward, fastest path between component and component. I think that's going to give you not only the best performance, but also the best aesthetics. So in general, you want to make your aesthetics as pleasing as possible. There's a couple other things in here that I, I did incorrectly in order to show you sort of what to avoid. If you notice the bottom GPU, I purposefully also placed different color cables. Um, the top one has custom cables and the bottom one, I just put the standard power supply cables. If you can hide it, sometimes you can get away with it, but I'd feel a lot better knowing that they're exactly the same cable. That way you can take a nice side picture. You see that everything's nice and even if you've ever seen really nicely designed cables. So all these little details go hand in hand because at the end of the day when you're doing a water cooled build aesthetics are definitely important. Does this system work pretty much just as well as when I had really nice tubing runs and I took my time to do it nicely? Yeah, actually the performance isn't too far off. There's nothing here that's really detrimental to the performance. It's going to come down to the aesthetics looking absolutely terrible like this where if you put in a little more time and planning it could look significantly better. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Just wanted to show you guys some things not to do. And then, of course, this build is waiting for the 3090. So as soon as that's released and I can get a water block with it, that's what's going to go in this build. For now, I couldn't really stand to look at this crazy loop. So at least I cleaned it up a little bit using sort of just soft tube. That way I can pull stuff out and upgrade it a lot easier because I'm actually using this as a test system right now. When the 3090 releases, I get a water block on it. Then I'm going to take my time and do as beautiful as possible job with nice hard tubes. I'm going to bend the tubes, make it really aesthetically pleasing, make it very, very nice. So until then, this soft tube setup is going to be sort of my test bench for now. This is an MSI godlike motherboard with a 3950X. And of course, in here we have a 2080 EK card, at least now with just the soft tubes, it looks a little bit cleaner. I still think that a case like this, of course, you have to do, you know, custom bends and hard tube just because it's such an awesome premium case. But I'm going to do that as soon as the 3090 releases. I don't want to do it now because who knows what the sizing is going to be on these water blocks. That 3090 looks like a pretty huge card. So I'm going to wait until that comes out. Then I'm definitely going to do a nice touch up job on this. And then of course I'll post up that build update. That way you guys can see how it came out. All right, guys, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, hit that notification bell. Remember to leave a comment below and I'll see you guys on the next video.